Well, welcome back to the Road to City Hall. We are sounding off over a planned parking ticket grace period with Brooklyn Councilman Simka Felder and Paul White, Executive Director of Transportation Alternatives. Now, why, why, Mr. White, in your opinion, are summonses up greatly under Mayor Bloomberg? I don't think parking tickets are actually up this year. Um, well, I mean, 42 percent under Bloomberg's tenure. Well, recently, parking tickets have not gone up markedly. I think that over time, it's a good thing if parking summonses go up because it means the city's doing its job and it means the streets are getting safer and better run for the majority of us who are frankly not driving at all, but walking to the subway, walking to the bus, increasingly riding around on our bicycles, taking cabs. Parking violations clog streets. They encourage double parking. Um, they encourage cruising for parking. When the curb is saturated, people are cruising around looking for a space. So to me, this, this is a, uh, an indication um, of Mayor Bloomberg's broader plan to make our city function better, to green our streets, and uh, really provide safety and quality of life for the majority of New Yorkers who don't even own cars. Councilman, your reaction? <laughs> I applaud the effort to do everything that Mr. White has mentioned. But drivers are not criminals. And I agree that if somebody's parked in a bus stop, if somebody's parked at a hydrant, if somebody's parked in a, any way where they endanger the life of another pedestrian or motorist, then of course strict enforcement. But again, enforcement has to do with encouraging compliance, not raising revenue. And when 300,000 summonses are issued within five minutes of somebody being in a violation, not of one of danger, that sends the wrong message. It sends a message that New Yorkers have to become robots, not human beings, and make sure that they're at that spot at that given moment. That's not right. Where does this bill stand currently in the council? Uh, it hasn't been heard yet, but I am very, very uh, optimistic that we are going to hear this bill and hopefully be able to get this passed before the summer. Let's take a look now. Mayor Bloomberg is against this grace period. Let's listen uh, to what he had to say as it relates to this. You can't have discretion because that leads to even bigger chaos. If the, you have to move your car by a certain time, we, either, we should enforce that. If we want to change the time that you have to move your car, we should enforce that. All that would happen is if you change the time, people would wait another five minutes and then ask for a grace period. Mr. White, is the mayor correct? Absolutely. Mayor Mike is dead right on this one. Councilman? <laughs> I think that the mayor is dead wrong on this one. And in fact, the mayor and I and all of us here come late to appointments. And if you show up within five minutes, that's not I didn't considered. come late. I was here on time. That's I was considered. in the green room. You were that, late. I rode my bike here. That's <laughs> considered. <laughs> you, you, but, had, you rode the bike from around the corner where you live. No. But the I mayor, live in the, Brooklyn like you, Councilman. That's right. The, that's the, true. The, the mayor seems to really like you. What has he said to you about this bill? What, we don't discuss things that we disagree upon vehemently <laughs> that often. But I haven't discussed this with him yet. And I think that, again, uh, you can disagree about tickets that are issued to protect and to make sure that people are safe. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about treating people like human beings, not like robots, and having a culture of enforcement that's reasonable. And it sends a broader message to people, especially during hard times, that the city's not out to get you. We'll give you a break. If it, our clocks aren't exactly in sync, you have a few minutes to get there. I don't, it's a no-brainer to me. Okay, now, in the role of devil's advocate, and I'm going to throw this out to both of you, and I'll start with you, Mr. White. Isn't this exactly these types of quality of life issues, why people hate New York City? Uh, you know, when an agent is standing around to write you a $165 ticket? I think quality of life has gotten much better in New York City, and I think the majority of New Yorkers see that. I think that sometimes New Yorkers might feel inconvenienced or even perturbed by some of these tickets or other policies, but overall, it's going to make our lives better. If you're going to drive a car in New York City, the most pedestrian-rich, transit-rich city in America, you have to drive it responsibly. That means following parking law. That means following traffic law. Drivers simply have to realize this, and I applaud the city for actually enforcing the laws that we have on the books that protect New Yorkers and keep our streets functioning safely. But aren't you really for this because you're against any use of vehicles at all? I'm not against any use of vehicles. I use a car from time to time. 
It's good to use a car when you have to use a car. But most New Yorkers don't use cars. Most New Yorkers are taking the bus, they're taking the subway. And if the question is, how can we save New Yorkers money in these hard times, let's focus on the real issue here, which is the fact that our transit system is on the brink of collapse and the fares are about to skyrocket. Councilman? Yeah. Well, I, I guess Mr. White would encourage more ticketing just to raise money for everything around. I think that there, maybe we should encourage stricter enforcement for people who ride bicycles irresponsibly, run it riding down the wrong, wrong way of the street, riding down the sidewalks and other things like that. I don't understand when you say about most New Yorkers, I think it's wonderful to be able to ride a bicycle. I take mass transit most of the time. That does not mean that we should take motorists and drivers, trucks drivers, bus drivers and others and say, we're going to treat you like a criminal. 901 on the dot. If you're not there, we're going to issue a summons. This is, that has nothing to do with making the streets safer, making them more mobile, or anything else. That has to do with raising revenue. And if we want to send a message to people that it's, we're not out to get you, you should not have summonses issued at that moment or an agent waiting there. Not all agents, but some like vultures waiting to get you. It's just unacceptable. But, but Councilman, isn't it, as the mayor argues, a slippery slope? If you start saying five minutes after, then maybe it'll become eight minutes after and ten minutes after. And people not wanting to receive a ticket will want to keep pushing the time back. Well, there's no question that most, most people would say, let's not issue summonses at all. And there's a balance. The balance is being reasonable. Five minutes, I think, is reasonable. And the proof that it's reasonable is that the agency itself had an informal policy for a very long time not to issue summonses for five minutes because clocks and watches are differently synced. So what happened suddenly? Why is You're it changed? It's all for revenue. That's correct. And if it's not for revenue, then let's be reasonable. Now, I this, would prefer no legislation. This doesn't apply to your bill, the old parking meters, I believe. But what would happen then? How, how would we assess whether the five minutes is up? That's precisely the problem for that reason also because the bill wouldn't apply to most parking meters in New York City. In fact, the bill would only apply to a tiny fraction, less than 5% of the parking meters in New York City. The bill would send the message to motorists that, hey, you're okay, you have an extra five, maybe ten minutes, when in fact that's not going to be the case. And people are going to get tickets um, for no good reason because of it, because of that misunderstanding. It's a good sentiment to give people a break, but this bill is simply unenforceable and it's going to create, as the mayor said, more confusion. Well, I, I, I don't see so at all. I, I, I think that for some people it may be confusing. I think for most New Yorkers, are very, very smart, and they would much rather have a policy that they know clearly, especially, you keep on harping on this, and it's not, not reasonable, that most of this addresses alternate side of the street parking, where it's very clear the sign says 9 to 10.30, and they're getting tickets at 9.01. And New Yorkers have had enough. They're not stupid. New Yorkers are very smart, very shrewd. They know the difference between a grace period on alternate side or a muni meter where it's clear what the time is. And at this point, the, all, the other parking meters, what can we do? We're what, trying to fix as much as we out can. A quick follow-up, Council. Please. What happens when the sanitation truck is there at 901? And, Very good. And, and these cars are still there. Excellent question. What happens now when somebody parks illegally and a sweeper's coming down the street? It's not right, but they figure out what to do. They're either stuck or not stuck. Right? If we had a grace period, then it would be clear what the policy is. And you're right. There would have to be some adjustments in some terms of the street cleaning that knows that they would know consistently they don't have to worry about somebody being there illegally because the first five minutes they would be there legally. I'm out of time, but Mr. White, uh, for New Yorkers watching tonight, do you think most, honestly now, do you think most agree with your point of view or do you think they agree with the councilman that they want a five minute grace period before these tickets are done? If you're in the majority and you don't even own a car in New York, much less use it to drive around town, you probably don't care. Um, if you own a car, my guess is you're probably wanting a break. Everyone wants a break. But the fact is, is that this is unenforceable and it's going to send a confusing message to everyone. Well, gentlemen, we will see how this plays out. We thank you very much for joining us tonight. A very interesting issue. It is now time for a break. I will be back with the results of tonight's Snap Poll. Stay with us.